Greetings, brothers and sisters. It is I, Archbishop Belmont, from the Noble House of Belmont. And I'm coming to you again with another short, brief lesson. And hopefully this is a nice little evening lesson, especially for those brothers and sisters who don't really get the opportunity to sit down and to listen to what we here at the King's Bench and at the Third Temple English Church of England has to offer for our lost, long, English, excuse me, our lost old English heirs who has been erroneously labeled and called black, Negro, African-American, colored, ETC, Native American, you know, many different identities that has not only caused confusion, but made our people become disestablished and unable to connect to an inheritance that can be verified today with modern day statues. And so what I'm going to do with this lesson is just try to show you how I did it. And we're going to show key um, websites, key points that you can use today, right now, to find yourself to come back home. Now we know we're gonna have many brothers and sisters and deflectors who are going to try to say this information is not right. This is ludicrous. It's so gonna to try to say that you're so-called blacks and blase blind you're from Africa. All of that stuff is made up. You know, it's now time for the truth to be put out there to the forefront. And for anyone who wants to go against the truth, your fate had to been sealed. You know, because the amount of hate you have within your heart, you can actually be doing a lot more good by actually telling the truth to those heirs who need to hear this truth. Because your salvation depends on them rising from out of their deep conscious or sleep that they have been in for far so long. And with the situations and calamities that is taking place here on the planet right now that you call Earth, which is planet Albion, you don't have much time to really get this information out there to these people or to our people, my people, your people, the heirs to this planet that you call once again Earth. That is, it is planet Albion. And so let's go ahead and get started with this lesson. Because once again, it's only supposed to be very, very quick, simple, straight to the punch. If you have any questions, concern, please leave comments, subscribe. You know, this information is not meant for you to just hear it for entertainment purposes. It's meant for you to do something with it. That's either you make it applicable to your life or you pass the information on the video on to somebody else so you feel this will help. But just by sitting back and not doing anything you not only do yourself uh, injustice, but you do an injustice for the folks who need to hear this. So with that being said, let's get started. Once again, we're gonna use our trusty friend it's from Wikipedia. Um, Wikipedia do have their their references for those who want to actually verify outside um, outside this platform or website. Now, once again, this is not meant to cause any confusion or harm to anyone, but it will make you uncomfortable if you have been living a lie for far so long or far too long, should I say. All right, so let's go ahead and get started. And this is the term Negro. And many of our brothers and sisters are familiar with this term and know that um, we have been historically um, denoted this term um, for all the way going back to so-called 1619, which is the beginning of the uh, so-called first slave or African that was brought into the so-called colonies at this time. Look it up. And the first so-called slave at this time, his name was John Punch. 
John Punch originally was an indentured servant, but situation occurred with him and a couple other recessive men who they got a lighter sentence, but John Punch himself was put into uh, to slavery or uh, life bondage. Okay, so let's go ahead and get it to the point of understanding the history of so-called slavery in the so-called colonies, which was in 1619. So slavery did not exist in the colonies prior to 1619. It was only under the form of indentured servitude. Okay, all right, so it says Negro. In the English language, zoom in a little bit further. In the English language, Negro is a term historically used to denote persons considered to be of Black African heritage. The word Negro means Black in both Spanish and in Portuguese, where English took it from. All right, so the term, the term Negro, like I said, it comes from so-called Spanish Negro or Portuguese Negro, which means Black in their language. But black itself is also the, the term black is an Anglo-Saxon term or so remember translating into English. English goes back to Anglo-Saxon. All right. So the term can be construed as offensive, inoffensive, or completely neutral. Largely depending on a region or country where it is used, it has various equivalents in other languages of Europe. Now, black historically have always been considered, especially in my time. Um, they, they've they been using it as a form of endearment or empowerment. But when the term was first brought in, it was actually considered, um, it was cons completely bad, you know, and what's Kawhi? Because it's, it's offensive. It's not calling me who I am as nationality, it's a true identity where I come from. You're really just calling me based off of the complexion which you feel my skin is, but also too, depending on what part of the country or the world is part of a caste system. But we're gonna talk about that as further lessons, um, if you don't know that already. This one says around 1442, the Portuguese first arrived in Southern Africa while trying to find a sea route to India. The term Negro, literally meaning black, was used by the Spanish to Portuguese as simple description to refer to the Bantu peoples that they encountered. Now, I don't know how accurate this is, but you know, just listen to it, take it for, for what it is. Like they say, eat the meat, spit out the bones. Negro denotes black and Spanish and Portuguese derived from Latin word Niger, meaning black, which itself is probably from a pro-Indo-European road to be dark, akin to night, all right? So Negro was also used of the peoples of West Africa in the old maps Lake Negro land, an area stretched along the Niger River. From the 18th century to the late 1960s, Negro later capitalized considered to be proper English language term for people of Black African origin. According to Oxford Dictionary's use of the word now seems out of date or even offensive of both British and US English. And they're, they're right, it is offensive. All right, let's, let's go ahead and continue to get to the, the point of this. Uh, this, like it says, a specifically female word, form of the word Negro, sometimes capitalized, was occasionally used. However, like Jewish, it has all but completely fallen out of use. Okay, so there's a similarity between Negres and Jewish, but that's not the point of this. We're gonna to get to here, United States, because this is where predominantly our people are territory-wise. The United States itself we know is a corporation, but we're not gonna talk about that because that's not the point. The point is that you, or see yourself in the territory called the United States, and you have known to be called Negroes. Now let's know or get an understanding of what that term meant here, going back in the time when they first used it all the way up until now. So that way you can see and find yourself going back in time in history, okay? So it says Negro superseded color as the most polite word for African-Americans at a time when black was considered more offensive. 17th century, now this is the point very, very key to pay attention to. 17th century colonial America, the term Negro had been also according to one historian used to describe Native Americans. All right, so this is the connection to show how the Negroes or the Native Americans are one of the same, or the original Native Americans are the Negroes, 
Okay. Now, many brothers and sisters are going to say, or those who are now known as Native Americans are not going to accept it. But that's not, you know, it's, it's, these are not my words. I'm just reiterating what you can verify with your own eyes. Okay. It says John Belton of Neal's The Negro Law of South Carolina. Now, this is where I want my brothers and sisters really pay big point in particular to because. I'm trying to show you the connection from how the Negroes, who are the original Native Americans, are actually these people who we've been telling you who we were from point one or from Jump Street, which are Berbers. In particular, the ancient Berbers, not modern Berbers, even though you can see some modern Berbers look like us, but particularly over here in so-called America or the United States, ancient Berbers. And we're gonna go verify it through the law and the act from the so-called state of South Carolina. And it says, John Belton O'Neill's The Negro Law of South Carolina, 1848, stipulated that the term Negro, the term Negro is confined to slave Africans, the ancient Berbers and their descendants. Now, I can read the rest. Let me go ahead and read the rest of many folks can parse that. read the rest. Okay, it says it does not embrace the free inhabitants of Africa. So it's about the free inhabitants of Africa over there, the so-called Africa, and now we know it's not really Africa continent-wise, that's just a colonial term, such as the Egyptians, Moors, or the Negro Asiatics, such as the Lascars. So it's saying that it does not embrace the free inhabitants of Africa, such as the Egyptians, Moors, or the Negro Asiatics, such as the Lascars. So it's saying that those people here who are moderately now known as so-called African-Americans or black or colored, who historically were called Negroes, were also known to be the Native Americans, but were confined to the term Africans to slave them, but they're the ancient Berbers. So, I'm showing you how all of my brothers and sisters here in so-called America who call themselves black or Negro, African-American of color, you're the original people from here, but you're Berbers, not Indians, not Native Americans. You're Berbers. You're Berbers, the ancient Berbers. Let's continue because Many brothers and sisters are still going to still like say, how, how are you going to say this? Well, we deal with statutory legislation and we also too have to deal with what's historically written down on the record that has been attested. We deal with law and history when they both work together. If you don't find any law that corroborates with the history that you're trying to stand on, then it can be disqualified. But when they both actually meet, then it's going to be utilized as your standing. And I'm showing you based off of not only from authors or historians, so-called point of view, but I'm also going to show you from the, the, the legislation that has been here since the so-called uh, 1740s, which is right prior to the so-called United uh, States, uh, the, the American Declaration of Freedom or Independence, whatever, how you want to call it. All right, so let's look at this. Okay, so it's called the Negro Act of 1740. The Comprehensive Negro Act of 1740 was passed in the province of South Carolina during colonial governor William Bull's time in office in response to the Stono Rebellion in 1739. The act made it illegal for enslaved Africans to move abroad, assemble in groups, raise food, earn money, and learn and write. You hear this? Learn to write. Now, what would they be learning to write at this time? English. Through reading was not proscribed. Additionally, owners were permitted to kill rebellious slaves if necessary. The act remained in effect until 1865. Now, wasn't 1865 the year of the so-called Emancipation Proclamation? Yeah, when so-called slaves got free? Yeah. So, you were... Oh, let me get to it. They're not going to sell you much on here. I want to get you, you, I want to show you 
the South Carolina Negro law itself. So it's kind of hard to sometimes find these these documents. Um, I have found it, but if I go to a website that will show you the statues and you know all the other good things, then it'll make it more sense for you. So that way you can see where I'm coming from because you have to use something that's going back in the time they created prior to the so-called states. And like if we're saying this is 1740 in South Carolina, well, we know South Carolina was still underneath the jurisdiction of what? The British Crown. Yes, the British Crown. 1763 was when George III did the, um, had, did the Royal Proclamation to that which forbade the so-called colonists to go across past the Appalachian Mountains. It was for the protection of the so-called um, indigenous people who you are now knowing to see the so-called Negroes who you see are known as the Native Americans who you are see are actually the ancient Berbers who I'm going to show and prove to you are the Anglo-Saxons who are the Englishmen who had lost our identity and been switched and been brought into all these different, you know. All right, so let's get to it. Okay, so one thing I would like to say is, it is, like I, I did speak on earlier, it's hard to find a lot of this information because they get buried through many new websites that's been, you know, um, it's been created. And the less people who research or look into this, the less likely you're going to find the links come up to the, to the top. So I would really like to give a, a shout out to Genealogy Trails uh, website. Um, because without their site, we wouldn't be able to see this as available ready for you to be able to do your own references. All right, so once again, this is the 1740 South Carolina Negro Act. All right, and this says, Genealogy Trails, the Negro Law of South Carolina collected and digested by John Belton O'Neill one of the judges of the courts of law and heiress of the said state under a resolution of the State Agricultural Society of South Carolina. Read before them at their September semi-annual meeting, 1848 Spartanburg Courthouse by them directed blah, blah, blah. All right. So it says section one, the act of 1740 section one declares all Negroes and Indians, free Indians in amity with this government, Negroes, mulattoes, and mestizos who are now free accepted to be slaves the offspring to follow the condition of the mother and that such slaves are chattels personnel. Let me repeat that. It says the offspring to the follow, excuse me, the offspring to follow the condition of the mother. So that says if the mother is a slave, the children is a slave. And that such slaves are chattels personnel. And this is going back to part two, secretor, which was instituted back in the 1600s, late 1600s, during, I want to say, Charles the first reign, but it was under the House of Stuart, regardless. All right, now let's go to the point where we wanted to talk about. And you can see right here on the right hand side, you know, public law, statutes, state, all that. It's just for those folks who want to see the legislation where it's coming from. And now the key point of this is the fact that there is no other legislation or any statute out here that speaks and lets you know, section four, here we go, says the term Negro is confined to slave Africans, the ancient Berbers and their descendants. So it's telling you that they, once again, we're just verifying what they're already saying is the ancient Berbers and their descendants are those people who have been known historically as Negroes over here in so-called America or the United States. And those people or the ancient Berbers themselves are also been known as Native Americans, which means that the ancient Berbers are actually the original people here to America. This is what they're saying based off of putting the pieces together from legislation and historical documentation. Now, this is key 
because you may be saying that, well, they're talking about Berbers over there in Africa, but we're going to let you know that the term Africa itself is a Berber term, which means cave. And the term of that continent over there was called Libya. Not called Africa, it was called Libya. Historically called Libya. Okay? We're not going to pull that up right now because the point of this was to show you that the so-called Negroes are originally the indigenous or the so-called Native Americans who are actually Berbers. They're Berbers. All right? Now, I want to say it was something else I wanted to show right before we got off of here. Um... But this moment, I can't think of it. I know this, hopefully, like I said, this is maybe a shocker to many of you who have saw, oh, the next video. The next video we're gonna talk about and show you how our people always knew that England was heaven and they were always trying to stay connected to England, but through the church, and we're going to not call it the church. We're going to call it what it is through the United African Methodists or the African Methodists or AME, whatever they're called now, the African Methodist Episcopal. I think that's what it is, the AME. Uh, it was supposed to actually be connected back to the English church or the Church of England, but it was not. And the members did not know that. And that's the reason why our people today are suffering from a lack of knowledge. But that's not for this video. That's just a couple of teaser information for those who may be interested to want to kind of start doing their own little research. Because now it's time to be able to show and prove um, that the, the territory right now, for those who are in so called America or the United States, you're actually in the realm of England. You're in the realm of the Kingdom of England. This is England. And as an English heir, Englishman, descendants from those kings and queens who have come and gone, and not only those kings and queens, but those people, great people who have left a great history, good, bad, whatever, we gotta accept it. But as us being the descendants and who have the torch in our hands today, it is our obligation to bring this information to the forefront, to, be, to restore balance to the planet. And the main thing is us as being the people is we need the most important ingredient for us to be able to maintain who we are. And that's the woman, the Anglo-Saxon Berber woman, the English woman, the English women. We need her to come back. She's been gone for far too long. And she has no idea the importance and what she holds and the mysteries that's within her, if she actually understood her true history regarding who she is. And I'm not speaking in the abstract, but I'm speaking more in the concrete understanding of her lineal descent that's confirmed and solidified through history as well as law. And once again, only those heirs can come back and bring this information regarding the old English people who are the Anglo-Saxon Berbers, who have been known as colored Blacks, Negroes, Native Americans, ETC. So once again, I am your brother, your loving Archbishop from the illustrious Noble House of Belmont. Um, please, for those brothers and sisters, subscribe to the channel, the Third Temple English Church, so that way that we can get this information out there to those heirs while they have the opportunity to hear our voices through these, through the technology that we have at our disposal. Um, you know, it's not for everybody. We come for our own first. And, you know, that's not something that we want anybody to, to be offended by. You know, our people have been hurting and been waiting for their salvation for so long and it only comes one way. And that's through the English church now known as the Third Temple English Church today, um, headed by our King of Peace, King Clifford Jefferson, 
from the noble house, excuse me, from the royal house of Plantagenet. And for the brothers and sisters um, who have been paying attention to our previous lessons will know that we are also the descendants of the elves or the Albions. That is who we are. Can't run from it. The truth is here for those who want to hear it. Um, and we had to accept who we are and take our place in this, in our home, on our kingdom, on our empire, which is called Planet Albion. So with that being said, I love you. Um, you know, this is not meant to cause any confusion, but to bring clarity to a world that has been living in darkness for so long. Peace.